Hello, my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those that are watching live and also those that are watching on social media. Remember, on social media, we have Facebook. We also have YouTube. We also have Twitter. Those are three social media platforms that we can uh, utilize to communicate. We want to make sure those ones specifically because they have the opportunity for you to ask questions, for you to uh, jump on board and actually put some input into what you hear. We want to make sure that you guys understand that this is a community show. So what is a community show? It's for everybody. Yes, this is a business TV show, but guess what? If you're an employee, you're part of a business. If you're potentially going to start a business, this is what you take into your business potentially. So this is what we want to do as far as a community show and how it has something and how it's relevant to you. There's going to be information that we're going to provide that may not make sense. We want to make sure that you have the ability to ask questions. We don't need you to be stuck at the house trying to figure out what's going on. We want to make sure that you're able to move forward. That's what this show is about, moving forward. This is about the heart and soul of your business. So if you're coming to watch this show because you're trying to be wealthy, understand there is a way to wealth, but we're going to do it spiritually. That's how we're going to address wealth here um, at Executive Talk. If you want to figure out a way to get your office better, you came to the right place. Guess why? Because we came to address this spiritually. To really help you understand what's going on internally within your office space. Because within your office space, within just you being a solopreneur, guess what? You're going through some emotions. And unanswered emotions create havoc on your day-to-day -day life. Especially on your day-to-day -day growth. You can't continuously grow and go forward if, you have, if you're stuck emotionally. So our job, and also specifically the Bible's job, is to break up that pattern and help you move emotionally. But let's go ahead and get into today's topic, and we're starting a new series. We just came from talking about are your habits toxic to your business growth. I encourage you to watch that show because one thing about executive talk for first-time viewers, they all trail off of each other. Okay? Now, for those that have um, been part of executive talk and been experiencing the show, you guys know how these shows are starting to connect or have been connecting. Let's go ahead and get into today's topic. The business that survives. Why am I quiet? There's nothing wrong with your audio. I want you to think about it for a quick minute. The business that survives. I want you to understand the positioning of this particular slide here. There's a question mark. Why do you think there's a question mark? That's what we're going to jump into in this, in this topic is we're going to figure out why that question mark exists in this title is why is the business that survives? Isn't, isn't that a good thing, Maurice? Sure. Is that the only thing? I don't know, but that's what this topic we're going to address. And I want you to answer for yourself, but let's go ahead and uh, get into some scriptures because we want to shape the, shape the conversation around survive and what that means. In Genesis 1, 3, it says, God said, let there be light. And there was light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Remember, the, the first scripture was everything was empty. God spoke light or life into that vault, into the emptiness. He spoke life into it. Let's go into a different scripture here. Genesis 1, 11 through 13. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bears fruit with seed in it, according to the various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, Plant, plant bearing seeds according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seeds in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning and day. Okay, the third day. Now, let's go ahead and break down that scripture just a little bit. God said, let the land produce vegetation. Now, let's, talk, let's sit on that word produce. Is producing a survival technique? It's not. It's a, it's a life technique. It was, it was, it's supposed to produce vegetation. That means something is supposed to come to life. Okay? All the things that happen uh, from plants, plants and trees on the land that are bear, bear fruit with seed in it, 
Everything was uh, to go according to their kind. And so it, and it was so. That means God wanted to see something happen. He put life into it and it was so. Okay, he wanted to see, let there be light and let there be darkness and created separation. He created life into that. It wasn't survival that he created. He created life. Now, let's look at Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed a man from his dust of the ground and breathed um, into his nostrils the breath of survival. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me read that again. Into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So, did anywhere in here, he said, did, did God create a, a surviving being? No, a living being, because he, he breathed life into him. Look at the connection there. So again, as you're listening to what's going on, think about the word survival. The business that survives. Are we along the right path when it comes to surviving? Well, the, gay, the way God has created life, there was nothing, he had nothing to do with surviving. He had everything, everything God created, he created life into. And since God spent all that time creating life into it, guess what? It still exists. Have we noticed that the, the night and day and vegetation still seed to seed of this kind? It still exists the way that God planted it in the very beginning. That's because life can continue through the ages. No matter what we're doing as humans, this is still happening. So then let's talk about Genesis 3, 6, because this is where, again, we have minimized what the fall was all about. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom, she took the fruit and ate of it. She also gave it to her husband and he ate of it. Now, why is that so important? Because God had gave them instructions to remain in life. As soon as this instruction, as soon as the enemy had came and the serpent has came to the garden and gave them a different type of instruction and they followed that, they went to a different way of life. They chose a different way of, they, they, they chose a different standard. They chose that, you know what, we can do it on our own. So something, uh, something major happened in the garden. And it was the separation from life. That's where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and go to Genesis 3, 17 through, 20, through 18. To Adam, he said, and this is after the fall, after God came to the garden and was asking what happened to you, what's going on, that whole conversation, the whole dialogue, once he cursed the enemy. Then all of a sudden he went to this place of, uh, to Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate, ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and dust you will return. Okay? We rarely in church or anywhere actually talk about that scripture anymore, don't we? Guess what? This is where survival started to take place. You didn't die, but because spiritually you broke, broke from God, there was a death that did happen. But guess what? You still exist. So God's allowed you to survive, but understand, cursed is the ground because of you. There is something that has majorly happened to mankind based on the decision that he made. This is the end result of where we're at. So then let's go ahead and fast forward to your childhood. As you guys know, with executive talk, we also want to bring in the root issue to where all this stuff has come up for you. 
Now, in your childhood, you have your, your father, you have your mother, and you have you. Okay? And so, why do I have the dollar sign in here in, the, in, the, in this photo? Well, let's think about it. You know, and this is not, and we got to understand communication because it's how it's received. And this is why it becomes major. You know, in the household, it's very common for a father and mother to say, yeah, we can't afford that. Um, we can't do that. Or I have to leave. I can't spend time with you because I have to leave and I have to go do this. There is a, a communication that's exact, but it's also sending a different message as well. And money has this way of saying, hey, you know what, son, or you know what, daughter? We're just getting by. We're just making it happen. No problem. You know, that's just how life is. We're all right. What's going on with my communication? Am I speaking life at the table? Is my son or daughter receiving life by hearing me say that? They're hearing something different that's happening at the table right in front of them, whether you as a parent know it or not. But there is something that happens to this dollar. And I have the dollar in here because it actually starts to determine if you're really living or not. If that's where your heart is set on. Because the dollar can tell you, well, we can't, we're only to this particular standard, so this is who we are. It creates a value for you if you're struggling with value. And so now you start to communicate based on the value that you feel like you have received in the place that you have, that you, that you have gotten. Well, with that being said, you're starting to communicate that into the household and it's radiating the way that everybody lives to a certain standard. Okay, so now the kid has this, this conversation within himself, with him, you know, with him or her, that I'm going to do better than what my parents ever did. You guys ever, have you guys ever said that before? I know I have. I, I, I was gung-ho on that because I was upset because I didn't get an Atari at the time the way that when I wanted it, right? So I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to make some more money so I can buy me an Atari, but buy whatever I want, right? I'm real arrogant at that time. I'm really just upset because I didn't get what I wanted. But I received communication that told me it was a, a survival that's happening. Survival becomes a lifestyle and survival is a generational habit that goes undetected. You don't know if you're surviving. Just, and you start comparing others. You start comparing yourself to the family that you see on TV. You start comparing yourself to the family next door to you. Oh, at least we're not like that. At least we're not like that. <clears throat> so you start to do it. It becomes a natural thing to you. And again, it becomes generational. Because I guarantee each parent has probably said, I'm going to do better than what my parents did. Survival is emptiness. Now, how can we, how we, how can we digest emptiness? Well, two, two ways. You guys have been in the car before and said, I'm sure everybody has done this at one point. You, you see the little meter on E, but you said, I can go you know, 60 more miles. So that means I can go over here and go over there and I can still move. There's a level of, of okayness that we have conditioned ourselves to. Okay, fine. That's, that's, that's a little concept, a little understanding. What about sleep? How many of us really sleep well? Or how many of us burn ourselves throughout the whole day and night and say we're okay? Don't you know we're operating on E all the time? And we can con condition that we can just keep on jamming and overloading ourselves and it's actually okay, we can figure it out? That's survival conversation. That's survival communication. And those moves are actually being interpreted by children. Because they're saying this is the way of life. Did you see that? that this is a way of life. This is okay to do. So survival, whether you, if you're going to do it, it becomes an action that is received by everybody that's around you. Now, another action with survival is you become real cranky and moody all the time. 
yeah, we blame it on, well, because our work or because you're acting up or you're doing a certain way. But you're not saying it's because you're empty. You're not telling everybody that you're living off survival and that you can't maintain your, your, your attitude. So survival plus a bad attitude becomes okay. See? Survival is now part of your paradigm as to what you're growing up with. Because generationally, everybody keeps on doing the same momentum over and over again. So, John 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. He absolutely loves the fact of survival because guess what? What did he replicate in the garden? In Genesis 3, 6, did he not come to him to destroy that relationship? Because once you're in, because you were in the place of life, because your connection to God and that relationship was right there, you were, you were obedient at that time. But because of disobedience, it, because enemy has witnessed disobedience in the very beginning, don't you think he's creating the same garden experience with you day to day? What is the destruction here? If I can get you being disobedient to God, if I can keep you outside of the Bible, if I can keep you outside of these things, I can teach you how to survive. In Romans 12, 2, it reads, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, is, is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, why is that particular scripture important? I bet you can't find out where I'm, where I'm headed with this scripture. Okay, we don't have a lot of time, so let me go ahead and give you the, the, the answer. Do not conform. What do you think the enemy's destruction and the, the killing that he provides? All you have to do is conform. All you have to do to manipulate this scripture right here, let me show you. Let me take this word not out. Do conform to the pattern of this world. And it changes the whole context of what that is. The enemy is going to use a scripture, but then take it out and manipulate it in order for you to still follow his scripture. And it's everything outside of God's will. So as long as you conform, guess what? You can conform a whole environment to survival. You as a parent had that influence to conform the whole, all your kids' future understanding of 18 years or 19, 20 years of being in your household to learning how to conform to survival. Now, parents, you're going to get all protective right now. I'm not asking you to. I'm asking you to be free here. Open your heart. Because this is part of that generational understanding that we're breaking, we're breaking ties right now. But we're also creating understanding around survival. Because I'll, I'll be the, one, the first one to admit, I never even thought about it from this perspective until this show. Survival destabilizes your foundation. It does not provide a place where you can feel comfortable. You're constantly in suspense. Because guess what? Let's go ahead and take, about that, take that analogy when we're talking about the car. Have you ever been a passenger in somebody's car and you saw it on E and you actually asked a question? <laughs> hey, 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 bro. Hey, I know you're cool and everything, but you see your car's on E? Are we? I know we're going here, but are we going to make it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'm in suspense the whole car ride because I don't, I trust him, but I don't trust that meter. So I'm having an issue here. The whole time I'm, I'm sitting in the car like, yeah, this is cool. Please don't move. Please don't go, oh, because I don't want to be stuck on the side of the road. I'm in suspense the whole time. It destabilizes my foundation in the conversation with him based on where I was at and based on what I saw, based off of E. Let's go ahead and take it to the next level and talk about the definition of survival. How many of you guys looked up survival? Probably nobody. Neither have I. I want to make sure those that, are, that read the Bible understand this is not from the Bible. This is Webster Dis Dictionary more than likely Google, where I got this from. So just want to make sure we're clear. The state or fact of continuing to live or exist, 
typically in spite of accident, ordeal, or difficult circumstances. Digest that for a quick second as I go to the board here. The state or fact of continuing to live or exist. Stop right there. Live or exist. Let's go ahead and take this out. The state, of, the state or fact of continuing to exist, typically in spite of an accident or deal or difficult circumstances. That's how deep survival is. I never really put the connection together. I knew it was something in business, you know, don't just do survival and all that other stuff. I never really understood survival biblically or spiritually and what, how that is such an impactful word. So, let's think about it. Let's put it in more, a better, a deeper context. I watch a lot of TV, especially at nighttime. I get to de kind of decompress and just kind of dumb it out for a minute. And let's just be real. And this is no judgment on the people that I'm watching in this particular show. So I want to make sure that's clear so you don't have to call the station and say that he was being rude. Okay? But here's the, here's the show. Have you guys ever seen that show, The 600-Pound Life? If you guys have, you guys understand what I'm talking about. The human body is one of the most amazing tools we have. How do I know? Do you realize that at that particular weight, that person still exists ultimately you would think at a certain point that would actually just just kill you but guess what that person is still existing in a different particular state but again it hits this definition right here the state of fact of continuing to exist typically in spite of an accident ordeal or difficult circumstance Think about that. So it doesn't take much. Now, that's one, one episode, but how much do we survive with some of the pain that we still operate with? And the, some of the same conditioning that we have. It's still a difficult circumstance to have emotional things going on. So you're surviving. You're existing regardless of it. And you feel like it's the state of life. You've been conformed. The longer you live in survival, the closer you bring yourself. This is why enemy loves to kill, steal, and destroy. Because your lack of knowledge in Hosea 3.6 says my people perish because, or my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So, the longer you're in survival, the closer you bring yourself into death. Because there's a lot of dynamic situations in your day-to-day, -day, a lot of choices. And that's the dynamic situation. The choices that you're making and that you're capable of making are coming from a place of survival and not life. There is an absolute difference. But you're, the longer you stay in this place, you're going to do everything that you can. Ultimately, you're bringing yourself to death. Galatians 5, 19 through 21, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debunkery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Uh, those, will not, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I sped through it not to minimize the scripture, but I want to get, make sure you understand this point. When you operate in uh, survival, idolatry is the first connection with the scripture that you have and it's the first disobedience that you have with God himself and in the Bible it says God is a jealous God he doesn't want any gods before you when your survival you're operating in idolatry and you're the God that's in front of God did you know that so when you operate in idolatry and the reason I said you bring yourself closer to death is because all these selfish ambitions, rage, start to, start to spit off from your place of idolatry. You remember, you can only operate on emptiness for so long until you start being cranky. Don't you, don't you know that you're, actually, you're not cranky? You're having fits of rage? Think about that. You have done this. 
And people have accepted it and say, oh, no, he or she's just tripping, so whatever. You know, I'm just going to shut it down. No, you're in survival, and your survival is affecting your environment. <clears throat> when you're in survival, there is a per persistent dissatisfaction with life. Let's go ahead and put some context around this whole show here. This show is set up and is going to operate in one or two different ways for everybody that's watching the show today. One person is going to watch this show and shut down because we actually called out a, a circumstance personally with, with your current situation. This should emotionally hit you in a, in a deep way. Why? Because it's something that was undetected. You probably said it before. You probably felt it before. But guess what? You never really dealt with it spiritually. Now that we're bringing it up spiritually, it's going to... It's, it's not going to go anywhere. Because every time you have a fit to raise, every time that you're operating in this place and you have some jealousy, you have some stuff going on, the, the first association that you're going to have is with survival. This particular show is a breakthrough show. Even though that you're digesting it for the first time, this is your first opportunity to deal with this persistent dissatisfaction with life that you're running into. Wait, hold on, Maurice. Hold on. Let me, let me start over. Because that's really not the question I want to ask you, Maurice. I want to ask you, how does this have something to do with business? Perfect. I get I, I was waiting for you to ask that question. So here we go. Because guess what? You have customers. Because guess what? You have employees. And this is what the show is going to break through. If you have a persistent dissatisfaction with life and you have other people's lives in your hand, do you think there's some kind of ill effect that's happening? Do you think you're in a good way right now? That's the questions I actually want to leave you with. Because that's why we're bringing up this show. Address this. Show up next time because, again, we're going to get deeper into this. It's, it's not going to go the way I even wanted it and intended it to. But nonetheless, God's way is the only way. So... I want you to join us next week. We're going to continue this topic. We've got three more episodes to address. In the meantime, I have to get back to work. <laughs>